As I've been building models with cloaks for more than the past year to make my Gaunt's Ghost's army, a couple of questions keep popping up every kind of now and again, and I really should get around to addressing them. All of the options that I've looked at for cloaks look great for the majority of a Tanith first and only army. All of your standing models, your running models, and most of them would probably look fine for prone models if they don't hang too weirdly. But what about those models that are kneeling, where the cloaks end up sticking into the floor? And what about models that have backpacks, which is mainly Vox units and flame troopers for the Imperial Guard? Well, hi, I'm Ed Scar, and in this video I'll discuss a few options and make myself up a model that is both kneeling and has a backpack. But before that, I'll look at some of the options that I've already made. Going through my Tanith models so far, I actually have a surprising number of them, so let's get stuck in with my kneeling models. Firstly, unhelpfully, are the two official Larkin models, full scoped with their sniper rifles and cloaks, and this is unhelpful because you can't really remove the cloaks and put them on other models and you can't even buy them separately. A little more helpfully, and I think this is one of the best options for kneeling models, is the Devic Designs cloak, usually as a replacement torso with the cloak attached. As these are slightly shorter than most of the other cloak options, they don't touch the ground on kneeling models. And I'm using plenty of Devic Designs torsos for my army anyway, so there's no issues with combining them with the kneeling legs that I've ended up with. This is a Victoria Miniatures cloak, and you can see that it is just hanging over the base a little here. There's no law against overhanging the base, you know, you get bayonets sticking out and gun barrels and spears and all that kind of stuff. Well, you can have the cloak sticking out a little bit too. These other Victoria Miniatures cloaks have a different solution. By dipping these cast resin pieces in boiling water, you can very gently bend them. And if you hold them in that shape while they cool, they usually hold that shape. You can also shatter them, so care is recommended here. Another Victoria Miniatures cloak, but this one is wildly ignored. This is the Svargan Winter Officer, and it has a much shorter cloak. So just like the Devic Designs ones, they work just fine on a kneeling model. There are some other cloaks that I found that happen to be short enough, and these two are from Anvil Industries, the Wasteland cloaks. The left is pretty short, and the one on the right is kind of on the limit of how long it can be because it is touching the ground. Now another method here, and I'm sort of showing a, a similar concept with these models submerged in resin, is to cut the cloak short and cover it with the features of the base. Usually for a kneeling model you would only need to trim it a little bit and you could cover it up with mud texture or grass tufts, that sort of thing. But in this case I've actually kind of submerged them quite heavily in a river uh, using clear resin. But not only can you modify or accommodate for pre-made cloaks, you can make your own and make it match any model and any base. All of these sculpted or crafted cloaks can be made shorter or with the end clumped on the ground. Uh, this one is just one example of that, and that's my masking tape cloak. Let's take a break from kneeling models and talk about rucksacks, comm units, ammo, and other such things that might be on the model's back. If the cloak is on the back and the backpack is as well, there is some interference here, and we kind of need to account for that. Except you don't necessarily need to account for that, as my three Vox Troopers show. I have been very lazy. This one is just glued onto the cloak. From a gaming distance, you'll never notice, but having a close look, you can clearly see this big old gap. The other two are a little bit better fit, and I've shaved one down quite a lot to get it to sit at a more appropriate level. A little bit of carving of the cloak and a carving of the backpack makes this a very easy to achieve solution. Having a closer look at my heavy flamer, this is another one of those Anvil Industries Wasteland Cloaks. And these are a good option for some kit bashing stuff on the back of models, because they already have stuff sculpted into the cloaks. This one has these little heat vents, and so I gave it to Brustin with the Heavy Flamer. But some of the others would make for good comms units if you did a little kit bashing with an aerial, a speaker, some other kind of bits to make them look the part. 
And of course, just like with the kneeling models, back mounted equipment is easy to accommodate with any sculpted or crafted cloaks. These three of my flamers here have millipot cloaks, which uh, sculpted around kind of part of the tank and the arm, kind of on the side more than the back. But you could easily sculpt them under the tank or over the top, which actually is something I don't have an example of. Kind of covering over the top with the cloak would make things easier, especially if you didn't have a Vox unit or the tanks, and maybe you had some kind of block of material and an aerial that you could kitbash and then cover it up to make it look like what it isn't. So as I promised, I'll actually make a model today. And this one is both kneeling and has a pack. And hey, look at that. I have a Vox Trooper that I'll use as Beltane, which I built ages ago and never got around to making the cloak. The legs are Anvil's kneeling putty legs. The straight silver is from Victoria. And pretty much all the rest of the model is from the Cadian Command Sprue uh, Vox options. To make things easier to sculpt, I'll tear off poor Bell's head, something all awry there, and start mixing up some millipot. This little mold I made ages ago certainly doesn't give me an instant cloak, it never has, but it does give me a good starting point. But in this case, I'm leaving a gap in the middle, and this is because I don't want much of the millipot clogging the join between the Vox and the back of the torso. Laying this whole sheet onto the model and then firmly pressing the Vox unit onto it makes for some kind of smushing the clay into all of the shapes of each part and when I come to glue it later on that will end up being very strong. I also sculpted the front part of the cloak but I left most of the back being quite messy as I kind of sculpted in two layers. I gently pried off the Vox unit leaving the milliput on the torso and after the first lump of milliput cured I came back for my detail layer, filling in the cracks and sculpting in the nice little folds that I like to make. This was actually really quick. Uh, I'm a sort of just doing the corners of the cloak and the little bit of the front so there's a lot less surface area than if you're doing a full cloak without anything covering it. But again, I pressed the Vox unit on to ensure that the millipot matched the surface for the two parts for a good fit. Now I forgot to pull it off again the second time and turn kind of so I could glue it down properly and so it fell off while I was painting. Actually, it's a good advantage for this to give me access to the cloak for a nice easy time painting. Sort of sub-assembly by accident, if you will. And once it was done, I dropped a dot of super glue and the model is complete. Now I haven't gone into a lot of detail about how to sculpt. I have a tutorial already if you want a deeper look at that. And oh, I have so many ghost videos that I'm cross-referencing myself all the time these days. Little Beltane can happily join my Tanith, looking great in any squad, and certainly that Vox unit fits better than some of my others. But hopefully that's a whole bunch of options for you to consider about how to fit cloaks to kneeling models, or how about putting backpacks onto a cloak. And I do need to try one with the cloak over the top sometime. But for now, I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.